Well, hey everyone, this is Don Smith, and I want to welcome you to the February tip of the month on March 1st. I have a reason for that. If you've been following me on social media this past week, you know Barry and I did a trip down to Death Valley uh, National Park. Barry had never been there before. I hadn't been there in probably six years. And we went down, had a terrific time. Uh, my friend Gary Hart uh, helped uh, to let me know what days to be at Zabriskie Point for the moon set. And then we actually uh, finished a trip out. Uh, yesterday, we went, uh, two days ago, we went up to Lone Pine, and then yesterday we shot the moonset over Mount Whitney that's currently out on my social media site right now. What I thought I would offer you today is something that has intrigued me for quite a while, and I really only got uh, going on it about three weeks ago, and um, that is the uh, accessing the Apple Pro RAW file now. Uh, that is now in your version iOS 14.3. I didn't know a thing about how to go in and access this raw file, and it's a beefy file. I'm getting 26 to 27 meg uh, raw files off my iPhone 12 Pro Max, but I believe this works back backwards to um, the iPhone 11s and the iPhone 12 Pro. Uh, so I, for those of you that are not uh, Apple iPhone users, I'm sorry that this is limited to the iPhone, um, but uh, for those of you that are and you want to access that file, you know, this is the camera we all have with us all the time. So there's three steps we have to go through, and it took me a while to figure out these three steps. I would figure out one, I would bump into some frustration, have to get around that, um, and so I'm hoping to consolidate everything I've found into one video for you here. So the, let's get started on this. The first thing you're going to want to do is tap on your settings and you're going to want to scroll down to camera. And when you click on camera, right up on top, you're going to see formats and then you're going to see camera capture. I leave that at high efficiency. And then on the bottom, you're going to see Apple Pro RAW. Now, you have to actually go in and turn this on. This is not on by default. And you can actually, I'll just read this for you. Show camera control for Pro RAW. Pro RAW is a 12-bit file. So you get a lot more information in this RAW file that uses the linear DNG format to retain more information and dynamic range in the file, providing additional flexibility when editing exposures and white balance. Each file is approximately 25 meg. So um, I'm going to back out of the camera settings while I'm at this. I actually have gone in and turned my iCloud off. Um, you can turn it on when you're shooting uh, JPEG. If you don't mind paying for all that storage space when you're shooting RAWs, just know every time you click a RAW um, image, if you're anywhere where there's uh, cell service, that's going to start uploading to iCloud and you're going to be filling up your iCloud rather quickly. So I've just gone in and turned mine off. Okay, so that's all well and good. Um, let me, let me uh, go to step number two that I had to figure out, and this took me a little while. Right above camera in your settings is photos. So if you click on photos, you can see now my iCloud is turned off, but I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom there, and you're going to see transfer to Mac or PC. By default, the check mark is in automatic but you want to put it on Keep Originals. So you're going to have both the JPEG file and the RAW file to use. Okay, so that's step number two. And now let's actually get out of the settings and just open up the iPhone camera. And now if you look on the top, over on the top right, you actually see that the RAW is turned on. Uh, if I ever want to turn off RAW and shoot JPEG only, I just tap it and it'll put a little line through it, and then it'll just shoot the um, JPEG file. The, one of the beauties about the RAW, uh, and I'm not the best at explaining this, but the Apple files, to me, just look incredible, and it's this computational photography that's going on behind the scenes, where every time you click a, 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 a picture, it's taking multiple images, and it's uh, kind of like HDR on the fly. It's, it's exposing images for the highlights 
and for the shadows to give you a really nice balanced look. And um, that will retain or come over in the raw file for you from what I'm understanding and uh, what I'm reading. Okay, while we're in the camera app, this is something that's very important. Took me a long time to figure this one out. I'm going to scroll. I'm going to, whoops, let me come back over to photo and I'm going to lift up on the word photo. Uh, the fourth icon from the left, you'll see I'm in 4.3 aspect ratio. A lot of times I like going into 16.9 aspect ratio, which would be, you know, the full screen, but that's cropping in on the sensor. What it's, uh, what it's uh, not allowing me to do is transfer that RAW file over to my, either my uh, laptop or my um, iMac. So if you're, as of now, unless there's a firmware update um, or an operating systems update that's going to address this issue, you must be in 4.3 crop mode because that's the sensor crop size from what I'm understanding. Uh, to get the full benefit or to even get the raw file to come on over to your computer. Okay, um, the last thing I want to show you, and this has been kind of uh, fun, I want to open up my photos and uh, whoopsie, let me go back and you're going to see all these red images. You're going to go, what is that? Well, I have been playing around with an infrared filter from Singray. And before I go much further with this, I want to acknowledge a photographer whose videos I had seen uh, and images on social media. His name's Rad Drew. And um, he did a couple videos that kind of piqued my interest. Um, because of the LiDAR sensor inside your iPhones on the 12, and I believe it's in, in on the 11 also, this will work. The, the one that's giving you, it's a mapping sensor. So when you're shooting like at night, it, it sends a, uh, a beam out. I don't know. I'm not an engineer. You guys can go online and, and get an, a better understanding how it works. But it actually maps out the subject matter and um, it allows you to handhold a long exposure because it's clicking all these individual frames. And um, so it actually will go through uh, the opacity of an infrared filter. Now, when I first started testing this, I, I had a 77 millimeter and 830 iRay filter from Singray. I use just all Singray products. I love it. I'm a Singray ambassador. I've been using them my whole career. The problem was I'd have to put my iPhone on a tripod holder because the exposures were three, four seconds, somewhere in that range. And I just couldn't handhold that long and get a sharp image. It gives you a really, really stark, dynamic black and white look. That's very cool. So then I, I contacted Singray and asked him, would you guys send me out a 53 millimeter, uh, 690 nanometer? And that perfectly covers the three lenses on the iPhone 12 Pro. And it also allows, it does not cover up the LiDAR sensor. And I had a soft case by Apple that I put onto my uh, iPhone 12 Pro Max. And then I just took a little bit of gaffer tape and um, just went around the edges of the filter and kind of gaffer taped it into, into um, place. And this picture you're looking at here, this was shot a couple days ago out in the Eastern Sierra in late afternoon light. This is the famed Mobius Arch. You're looking right straight through to um, Mount Whitney in the background, the highest peak in the uh, lower 48 at 14,505 feet. Uh, disturbingly, you're not seeing a lot of snow on the mountains, but that's just because we've been in a drought year out here and it's not been good. But um, I can take this picture now. I can come to the bottom little icon. I can hit airdrop and my computer's on, and you heard it just beep in, and I can actually now airdrop the file over. Um, I can also, and this is uh, the way I've been really doing it, is I'm going through photos. Now, um, this has replaced iPhoto, so you, you have photos on your iPhone, you have them on your iPad, and you have them on your laptops and a home, your iMacs if you own one. 
So you would open up photos and uh, plug your phone into your computer. And when you tap on your phone, all your photos will open up and then you can just simply select which ones that you want to do. And you can see, let me back out of here, that I played quite a bit with um, photos out in Death Valley. Um, Gosh, this we we were even out. Let me let me check this one. We were even out on the famed racetrack, and I tried doing some to see what they would look like. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play around with these and have a lot of fun. Here's another one, um, and I just convert these straight to black and white in Lightroom. And I just been using Lightroom uh, black and white presets. And then if I want to uh, make them even more stark, I will go into Nick Silver Effects Pro and work on them in there and nick is just a great product um, it's still out there it's it's being it's been updated continually gets updated so i really highly recommend it okay so that's how you go through and you access your raw file and that's how you can bring it in to your laptop and you got a 25 to 26 megabit file and uh, you know we all have our, our phones with us all the time and I can't tell you the number of pictures I've made just on the fly because I haven't had my regular Sony cameras with me. And now I can access that raw file, which is really cool. So hopefully this has helped you out. Uh, I'll be back with you guys in about three weeks here for the March tip of the month. Uh, but until then, I hope this has uh, been useful for those of you that are Apple iPhone users. And until then, just stay creative and we'll talk to you soon.